Good morning. Welcome back to online worship here at Canopy Roads. My name is Miss Jenna and I am the children's ministry leader here and thank you for choosing to worship with us. We are enjoying this so much. I am just so grateful that we get to be together this way and I am excited to share with you that we will be reopening Pier 252 on September 13th. And so our first Sunday back in person will be on that Sunday. And I hope that you will plan to join us. For those of you who are not quite yet comfortable coming back to worship, we still plan to offer our services just for you online. So uh, that will not be going away. Uh, we still wanted to be able to reach you and, and share worship with with you, uh, if you're not quite ready to come back in person, we totally understand. But for those of you that uh, feel more comfortable, we will be reopening Pier 252 very soon, and I just cannot wait. I am looking forward to being with you guys again in person. Over the last few weeks, we've been talking about creation and all the things that God made on each day. God took a whole week, seven days, to create everything. And so over the last few weeks, that's what we've been sharing every Sunday. And I have really enjoyed it. And I was talking with one of our Pier 252 kids on Zoom one day, and I was so impressed because that child remembered everything that God made on every day. And it just, I was so happy uh, seeing that they, they had learned all those Maybe some of you already knew what God made on every day before you started um, or before we started talking about this. But you know what? I think it's great that um, we're, we're talking about this and what a special thing to learn about is, as it really shows us God's power as creator of the universe. So today we will be talking about day number six. We are almost to the last day. But today we'll be, we will be talking about day six when God made something else that was very important. And this thing that was made had a very special purpose. What God made on this day, he created to have relationship with him. So our word up for today is God created us for relationship. The reason that man was made and that's what he made on the sixth day. The reason that man was created and woman was created was so that they could have a relationship with God. So let's practice our word up together. Are you ready? Word up. God created us for relationship. Awesome job. This time I want you to do it with a loud voice. Say it like you mean it. Ready? Word up. God created us for relationship awesome job guys we will be discussing that today and how the reason that we are here is so that God could have that relationship with us so that we could know who he is and there is something that happened that we're going to be talking about today that hurt that relationship but God made a way so that we could still know him and be with him forever one day and so I hope that you are excited to learn this today. Get ready. We're going to have another great uh, Sunday together. So let's get ready and worship God through singing. Well, today, 
we are talking about the last day that God created something. So far, God has created the day and the night. He's created the sky and the water. He's created the seas and the plants and the land. He's created the sun, the moon, and the stars. And last week, we talked about how he made the birds and the fish. Well, on this last day, God created animals and people. Let's read in Genesis exactly what God's word says that he made on that day. So today we are reading from God's true word, which I read to you from this book every week because we at Canopy Roads and Pier 252 believe that God's word is the true word, that everything in this book is full of truth. And it tells us exactly what God did and what he wants us to know. And so let's look at Genesis chapter 1, and we're going to read verses 24 to 31, okay? So if you have your Bible, you can go grab that right now, and you can follow along with me as I read. So here we go. It says in verse 24, And God said, Let the earth bring forth living creatures according to their kinds, livestock and creeping things and beast of the earth according to their kinds and it was so so here we see that god made the livestock those are things that we see you know around us like cows and sheep and all kinds of animals like that and creeping things like um like a snake or a lizard those things that creep along the ground and beasts of the earth, like lions and bears and tigers. He made all kinds of animals, and all he did was speak it, and those things came to be. And God made the beast of the earth according to their kinds, and the livestock according to their kinds, and everything that creeps on the ground according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. So we see in those few verses that God created all of the animals. He made all of the animals that we see around us. And I love how many times it says, according to their kinds. That shows species. There, there were species of all kinds of animals. There wasn't just one kind. There are so many. In verse 26, it says, Then God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heavens and over the livestock and all over the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him, male and female, he created them. And God blessed them. And God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heavens and over everything that moves on the earth. And God said, Behold, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is on the face of all the earth and every tree with seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food and every beast of the earth, and every bird of the heavens, and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life. I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. And God saw everything that he had made. And behold, it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. So we see here that on this day, God created the animals and he created man. He created animals just by speaking it and they came to be. All kinds, big animals, small animals, insects, all kinds, all kinds of animals. He made them all and he made them exactly the way that they were supposed to be. Everything that you learn about an animal God designed it exactly that way. I know when I was teaching school, 
um, teaching kindergarten, I had a student once say, Miss Morris, why does a butterfly do that? Why does a butterfly have this part on their body? They were asking me why. And I just could think about, this just reminded me that God made butterflies to do exactly the things they do for a certain reason. And what a butterfly can do, a spider may not be able to do. What an elephant does, or the way an elephant looks, is different than a lion. But God made all of the animals that we see around us all the time, and he made them special. But he also made man. Man was made from the dust of the ground. He created the first man, which was, as you know, who was it? Yell it out. Adam. It was Adam, and Adam was the first man that lived upon the earth. And his job while he lived in the garden was to take care of those animals. His role was to protect them, to take care of them, and watch over them. And so one thing that Adam got to do was he got to name the animals. So maybe Adam came up to a lion and he started petting it. And at this time, all animals got along and all animals got along with each other and with people because the garden was perfect. So, so the animals that you see being together and seeing a, a human, a man touching a lion like that was okay in the garden because they weren't in danger. But I imagine that one day, you know, as Adam started to see all these animals and he's petting this furry animal with a mane and a tail, and he says, we're gonna call this a lion. Or this animal here with these trunks coming out of their face and, or their, these horns and then their long trunk that they use for water. We're gonna call this an elephant. And Adam, he got to help name the animals and he got to help uh, take care of them. That was his job in the garden was to do that. But something that, that God realized when he had made man and he had made the animals was that Adam was alone. He was by himself. And you know the story that God decided that he would do something about that. And so God created him a helpmate, somebody that would be there to help him in the garden. And so it says in Genesis 2, this is what it says, two, chapter 2, verse 18. Then the Lord said, it is not good that the man should be alone, and I will make him a helper fit for him. Now out of the ground of the Lord, or out, I'm sorry, now out of the ground the Lord God had formed every beast of the field and every bird of the heavens and brought them to the man to see what he would call them. So that's the part talking about how Adam would get to name them. And whatever the man called every living creature, that was its name. So we see two things here. We see that God wanted to create Adam a helper. And we see right there that God gave him the job to name all those animals. And so we see that here in these verses. Maybe that's something you didn't know about Adam's role in the garden, but it says that right there in Genesis that that was his, his role. It says, the man gave names to all livestock and to the birds of the heavens and to every beast of the field. So Adam, was busy naming all these animals, animals of the sky and animals of the fields. But then it says, but for Adam, there was not found a helper fit for him. So even though Adam had all these animals who were there with him in the garden, and we know that, you know, God put animals on this earth, I think, to give us company. If you're someone who has a pet, you know that your pet dog, your pet cat, your bird, your fish, 
there's somebody that's special to you and and you know I know for for people in my life that I know I don't have a pet but people I know that have them their pets are special and they give them company and and someone to to love and to take care of but a an animal doesn't um, give us the same kind of feeling that we get when we talk with a, another person when we have a relationship with another person and so while he had all these animals in the garden and he was naming them and taking care of them he still was alone he didn't there wasn't someone fit there for him to be alongside of him just like him and so this is what it says right after that that God did and so in verse in, in Genesis 2 22 I'm sorry 21 this is what it says so the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon the man. And while he, while he slept, he took one of his ribs and closed up its place with flesh. And the rib that the Lord God had taken from the man, he made into a woman and brought her to the man. So we see that he made Adam go to sleep and he took one of his ribs and he made it into a woman. And then the man said, this at last is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. And so we see right there that God created the animals and, and Adam first, but then God created woman. And now Adam had a helper in the garden. He had someone that was just like him that he could talk to, that he could have a relationship with. And so Adam and Eve were the first people that God had made. That is so neat. He created them to have relationship with one another. But that wasn't the only reason that God created man, not just for us to have relationships with one another, but he created man to have relationship with God himself. Well, if you know this story, you know that life in the garden was great for them. They lived among the animals. All the animals were, were kind to each other and to Adam and Eve. God put plants in the garden so Adam and Eve had food to eat all the time and, and they only ate the plants and, and the fruits. And God put plants in the garden and there was a tree there that, that God did tell them, you can, you can eat from any tree in this garden except for one. You cannot eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So they could do basically whatever they wanted in the garden except for that one thing they couldn't do. And as many of you know this story, one day everything changed. Eve was in the garden. Don't know what she was doing. Maybe she was just walking around and enjoying the beautiful things that God had put there. When she was greeted by a serpent in a tree and the serpent was in the tree of the knowledge of good and evil where those fruits were hanging. And the serpent began to speak to her and he tried to get Eve to disobey God and to do the one thing that he said not to do. And if you see the picture there, she's thinking about it. She knows what God said. This serpent, he's trying to trick her. He's tempting her. He's wanting her to do something that is not right. And what he says to her makes it sound like it's the truth. Is she going to fall for it? God said not to do it. But Eve, she did not obey God but she ate from the tree. She took that fruit 
And she took a bite. And not only that, but then she went to her helper, her husband, Adam. And she wanted him to give it a try. Is he going to fall for it too? I'm sure they had conversations together. Don't you remember? God told us not to eat this, but he does too. He does too, and they both take that bite. And immediately, the moment that they, that they disobeyed God, they realized it. They knew that they had done wrong. They knew that they had just disobeyed God. And they were ashamed. They realized at that moment that they were without clothing. And so they tried to cover themselves quickly because they did not have clothes. And so they covered themselves with leaves. And they were ashamed. They knew that what God had said they shouldn't do, they had chosen to do because they wanted to. And boys and girls, what do we call that? We call it sin. Sin are the things we think, we say, or we do that break God's law or make him sad. And this sin in our life is what hurts our relationship with God. It's the thing that hurts it. And Adam and Eve chose that, that choice. They chose to sin. And from then on, their relationship with God was hurt. And because you and I come from Adam and Eve, we too have that exact same problem. We're born that way with that sin in our hearts, doing, wanting to do things our way, and we have to be separated from God because of that sin. In Adam and Eve, because they had chosen to disobey God, they had to leave the garden. They were no longer allowed to stay. The garden that was perfect, it now was not because Adam and Eve chose to disobey him. And they were kicked out of the garden and they were not allowed to return. And this reminds me that I'm like Adam and Eve. I want to do things my way. And I sometimes think my way is the better way. Or, oh, I really want to do this. So ah, I'm just going to do it. And that's sin. And our sin hurts our relationship with God. And when God initially made Adam and Eve, he made them to have a relationship with him. And at first that relationship was perfect. But the moment that they sinned, it all changed. And God knew, now there has to be a way for me to still have a right relationship with the ones that I love. And so God had a plan from that moment. God had a plan and, and right away he knew that he was going to have to do something to fix this. And so God create, not created, God had a plan that he would send his son, Jesus. Jesus was not created because Jesus is God and he has always been He's always been. Jesus was not created. God was not created. He is the beginning and the end. And God knew that he was going to have to give up his son. He was going to have to give up Jesus for us. Jesus, God the son, would come from heaven to earth as a baby and he would grow up living a perfect life. And one day Jesus would have to be killed on a cross. He would have to die. So that relationship with God could happen. Because if Jesus never came, then the relationship that God desires for us to have with him, we couldn't have. And so Jesus had to come. And he died and he was buried and he came back to life. And because Jesus lives and because he died for us and he paid the price for our sin, now we can have that relationship with God. And that relationship that was hurt in the garden, we now can have. And so um, our relationship with God is important to him. It's very important to him. Word up, 
God created us for relationship. That's why we were made, and God wants us to have that relationship with Him. He wants us to know Him and to be with Him forever one day, but it's our choice to choose Him. Have you chosen to have a relationship with God? You could come to church, you could read your Bible, you could pray, but boys and girls, those things are just things we do. That's not a relationship, and God created us for relationship, and we have that when we choose Jesus as our Savior from sin, to take that sin away and to help us to live the way Jesus wants. And when we do that, then we have the right relationship. Don't be a religious person. Be a person who has a relationship with Jesus. If that's not a choice that you have made, I encourage you to think about that and to talk with someone in your home about that decision because God wants you to know him. Let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you so much that you created us for relationship. And Lord, even though we choose to sin, you still give us the opportunity to know you and to have that relationship with you. So I pray for the boys and girls watching this today that if they have not made that decision to ask for your forgiveness, that you would help them to know that you desire relationship with them. And if they would just believe in you, they could have that because that is why you made us. So Lord, thank you for this time. And those of us that know you as our Savior, help us to grow in our relationship with you every day. Thank you again that we can be together online. Bless the boys and girls and the families that are watching today. In your name we pray, amen.
All right. Well, that's all that we have for today. Let's just talk about a few things as we wrap up. Our lives, boys and girls, can get pretty hectic. <laughs> they can get filled with our schoolwork. They can get filled with things with our families, uh, sports and extracurricular activities that we're a part of. And a lot of things can take place of our time with God. But we should never forget that our relationship with God should always come first because word up, God created us for relationship. So he created us to be in relationship with him. And so his, uh, his time, time with him should always come first. We should always make time for him, even if it's just a little, because God isn't an imaginary person. He isn't a statue or, or an idol. He is real. He is alive. He is true. And he desires to have that relationship with us. So here's three things to remember for today. The first thing is God created mankind and all animals on the sixth day. All right, so remember that. The second, God has made us for relationship with him. And lastly, our relationship with God is possible through Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. I hope that you will remember these things this week, that God desires relationship with you. He wants to be close with you, but we have to do our part. He does his part. We have to do ours and choose to, to first accept him as our savior, to have relationship, and then grow in that relationship through prayer and reading the Bible and serving him and coming to church, all those things. So God desires to have relationship with you. It's why we were created. So remember that this week. Have an awesome, awesome Sunday, and I look forward to joining back online with you all next Sunday at 9.30. Bye, everyone.